Wow. Does anyone else? Oh, hold on. It's coming in. It's coming in real low here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Destiny 1 in 2023. I haven't played Destiny 1 in two years. Last time I checked this game out, I literally bought a 360 version so I could see what the game was like there. We are on the Xbox One and it's time to hop back into one of my favorite games of all time. Also, the absolute drip of some of the armors in this game. Wow. I think I'm going to play my my Warlock just because that's, that's the classic. That was my main back in Destiny 1. Oh my gosh, does this bring me back ever. Look at all the gear. What was my palindrome roll back then? Rangefinder, Rifled, Icarus. Let's go. We're going to play some PvP today. In fact, let's just go get some, some bounties in the tower, see if anybody's in the tower right now. Would you look at this? There are still people in the tower playing this game in 2023. Wow. Also, changed my mind. Armor 1 in Destiny 1 is way better looking than any of the armor sets in Destiny 2. Now. Don't know why, but that's just, that's 100% how I feel, man. Also, I've been watching through Firefly. I miss you. I miss you, bro. Come back. Destiny 1 changed my life in a lot of ways. Not only did I play the game and meet some incredible lifelong friends through this game, but I also hosted a podcast called Destiny the Show with one of my best friends, Diddy. We ran a weekly news podcast for Destiny for four and a half years from before the launch of Destiny 1 onward uh, into Destiny 2, and we hung up the headphones about a year into Destiny 2. Gosh, this music though, wow. And there's not a day that goes by that I don't miss that incredible community of listeners of Destiny the Show. I know the Discord's still around, we say hi every once in a while, but I miss it every day and I am so thankful for every single one of those episodes that you listened to or participated in if you uh, had a chance to listen to it back in the day. So this game really did change my life and I, I love it. I will forever love Destiny 1 and hold it in very high regard. So we have been searching now for about 20 minutes and not finding anything in PvP. So I think I'm going to go try and see if we can get into a strike. Do you think it's possible? Oh my gosh, we're back in it. This feels good. Uh, wasn't able to find any teammates loading in, but I think we actually just got a player. Who knows, maybe they'll want to group up and we can go do uh, some Crucible together. You know, a couple of years ago when I played this in 2020, I was able to get into PvP lobbies, even on Xbox 360, which I thought was incredible. All right, let me try and remember here. I think A is the super button. I haven't played Destiny on a controller in a long time. You know, thinking about it, do I miss Destiny 1? And the answer there is, yeah, I, I super do. Um, this game meant so much. Hello. And uh, I don't know. There was so much potential. It felt like there was just so much potential for Destiny 1 at the time. I got to bail around the corner. Otherwise, I'm going to get destroyed by the ship. And art style wise, again, they really tapped into something incredible here. I'm not saying that Destiny 2 isn't a beautiful game. It is. But from the art direction standpoint, it's not the same at all. It really isn't the same at all. Um, I think a lot of that great mystery from the old days is kind of gone. Much of the flavor in the atmosphere in D2, like, it's pretty much unrecognizable now. Like, how the game has evolved and changed over time. So, anyway, I do miss Destiny 1. I miss Destiny 2. It just became um, pretty time-consuming. And ultimately, that's why we stopped doing the podcast back in 2000 and it was it 19? Um life and work and things were just getting busier and so as you can expect when you get older um investment games take a lot of time now i lived for trials trials of osiris back in destiny one was what i looked forward to every single week I've, i'm gonna link uh, a playlist to some of those great trials of Os osiris experiences and weekends things like going flawless with no land beyond and doing really goofy trick shots with nova bomb and Hanging out with like my good Australian friend Sassy and other great friend Cat, like there just were really good experiences and times and memories, and those are friendships that are gonna carry on pretty much forever. So anyway, if you have some of those destiny memories, let me know. But I mean, just look at this. Look what they what they were doing. 
this on Xbox One, for goodness sakes. I have, like, all the new monarchy bling on right now. Oop. I don't understand how they were able to push such old hardware in a multiplayer game. Because this looks phenomenal. Could you imagine a PC port of this game? Now, what's very cool about Destiny 1 is you can see fingerprints of the future all over it. Now, the grind was not always better. I'm not going to sit here and just like fully go nostalgia mode to the nth degree and say it was. But there were some benefits of the grind being simpler in some specific ways. Uh, if you got a Gallarhorn <laughs> in the early parts of year one, I am very jealous of you. Uh, I did not get mine until two weeks before the nerf. And then Xur sold it, and that made me incredibly frustrated. <laughs> I was, like, not happy about that. You think Zombie's going to be... I don't think Zombie's ever done this strike. Like, he's been pretty confused looking at things so far. So let's see if we can take care of this for him. I got you, bro. I got you. There's one exploder. There's the second exploder. How are we doing? I'll take the, the brunt on that. I think he's going to do it. I think Zombie's going to do it. I might die. Yeah, I'm going to die, but Zombie did it. Let's go, dude. Proud of that man right there. Just chill, man. Just chill. You're good. No, don't walk into it, man. Yeah, I remember my buddy who didn't play the game very much. He got, I think, three Galar horns in the span of, like, three weeks. All while I was grinding my face off with Nightfalls. Back in the day, too, if you completed the Nightfall, right, you'd have the blue flame on your helmet. That was kind of titles at the time because those didn't exist that was the bling when you saw somebody in the tower who had just run it um you were impressed i mean nightfalls back then could be really tricky yeah there was a lot of cheesable opportunities on many of the maps like you could find certain spots and weapon combos that would break things up but boy you would go straight to orbit if you blew it there were uh not the same level of accessibility and <laughs> rougher edges, uh, you would say, uh, back then. Or not the same level of accessibility then, and a bit more of those rough edges. I'll never forget this game, though, and how much time I was able to put into it. Favorite era was undoubtedly uh, Taken King, followed closely behind by Age of Triumph. So this game put together four raids. Vault of Glass, Crota, Crota's End. King's Fall. And why am I blanking on Rise of Iron's raid right now? The SIBA one. I loved it. Wrath of the Machine. There we go. Sorry, that took me like way too long to remember. Those four raids were really fun, but they became very quickly obsolete. There was no real reason to go back and run some of the older raids except for nostalgia and maybe for the collection side of things. At the very end of Destiny 1, you had Age of Triumph, which brought the raids back, brought it up to current light level, and gave you an incentive and a reason to run them because I think it would cycle each week. Uh, there was new armor sets to get. There was current versions of the weapons. They weren't necessarily as strong as some of the old school stuff. I mean... Remember Firefly on some of the original patches? You could legit crash the game. It was pretty amazing. If you got too many ads on screen and too many of the Firefly explosions, you legitimately could just totally break the game and crash it. And those Age of Triumph updated versions of the armor sets were worth running. Uh, so you could get some just really Gucci gear. And ultimately, that would translate into Destiny 2 later on, where... You know, nowadays, you can run multiple endgame activities. It's not like all of the uh, old school raids are worth your time, but they do a little bit better of a job kind of preserving some of those older activities and giving you a lot of ways to get max power. Back in the day, you had a few pretty preset pathways that you had to uh, do to fully get yourself up to snuff and endgame. You know what I don't miss? All the dumb invulnerability windows that they put onto the game now. Oh, no! I just got environmental. Oh no, dude. Oh no, dude. I hope he's going to be okay. Oh, dude. Oh no, dude. Don't die again, Dragoon. No! I'm so sorry, bro. I'm the one who's throwing this stray because Zombie's taking care of business. I need to get rid of the, uh, the sniper bros. Come on, Zombie. I believe in you. I should put self-res on too. Oh yeah, this game, you have Warlock self-res. Very controversial. Controversial. Where's that sniper shank? Get him out of here, bro. I want that guy out of my face. Anyway, lots of nostalgia for this game. 
Nice. Lots of nostalgia for Destiny 2 as well, but nothing will probably ever compare to these kind of memories. Would any of you play a classic Destiny experience? Do you want to go through something like, you know, how WoW Classic had its, you know, sort of run through of things? I can't imagine a lot of modern players would. I think it would just be classic Destiny fans. Thank you, sir. Thanks for the invite. Praise the sun. Praise it. Also remember on the score screen, even in PvP, you could top frag and also get nothing. Bottom frag could get some sick gear. I want to thank you for watching the video today. Be sure to check out some of those classic trials videos that are linked on screen here. We'll see you again in the next one.